when life was normal. When the church used to pray from sudden and unprovided deaths, deliver us, O Lord. When people could go to sleep with the hope that they will rise in the morning. So the prayer then, when they talk about sudden and unprovided deaths, they were thinking of road accidents, or hunters go for hunting, and somebody is accidentally shot. And that you will not be sleeping and somebody will come and struggle you where you are sleeping. Or you are coming from a ceremony, some people will kidnap you and your husband or wife and slaughter you and remove all the essential parts of your body. When man was not a wolf to a fellow man, yes, I mean, when death was natural. At least you will ask me, Father, is there any death that is not natural? Because Shakespeare says that death is a necessary end which will come when it will come. But there are not deaths. There are deaths sorry, that we are not prepared for. When people travel today, they don't pray that they will not have accident on the road. What is prayer point? That they may arrive safely, they will not be kidnapped on the way. So this analysis I'm going to give has to do with life was really normal. When a man has lived, a woman has lived to a ripe old age, and it has dawned on the man and the woman that, look, time is winding out. Very soon I'll pass out of this world. So he will call his children and give them instructions on what they need to do after he or she has departed. Like the book that was introduced to you last Sunday, this right, the burial custom in Africa and among the Jews is at land there. How you need to be around your aged parents. My mother told me once upon a time that her own mother called her and said, a mighty tree will fall this week. If I'm going to be the tree, you will see it with your eyes. And if it's going to be someone else, I will tell you that is what I told you. One day, my mother called me and said, look, all the stories I told you, I'd like to put them in a tape for you. So I went to call a cameraman took almost a week or two. Almost all the stories he told me, they were recorded, video, not just audio. Little did I know that this woman was preparing for death. But when he had died, done on me that this woman was really preparing me. And if you Google my mother's name on YouTube, you see how with all those stories. And the fourth the week he died, the event that followed it. On the Monday, she requested for anointing. On a Thursday, she requested that my assistant pray should come and pray with her. And the day she died, she didn't want to die in the presence of my sister. 
as he told her to. Send her on a long journey, and my sister reached us together. And they requested that only my cook should stay around. And of course, she went to the bathroom, came out, and in the presence of my sister and my cook, she passed on peacefully. When she lived on air, she had always talk of what they call Igwe Akwesu. That is praying that you die lying on your bed. Today, we see Jesus Christ preparing his followers. His apostles. Remember, if you look at the chapters that followed up to this chapter 14, Chapter 10, we prayed for Christian unity. And pray that the church will be one when he had gone. So because he had told them a lot of things, in today's gospel, he says, if a man loves me, he will keep my word. Going back to our African custom. If you don't keep the words of your parents, the last words, they are very, very powerful. You know you will not find it easy. And what are these words that Jesus Christ is emphasizing and wanting his disciples to keep? Love. He said, if a man loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him. And what is the second word that Jesus Christ wants his followers to keep? Peace. Peace is flowing like a river. Flowing out of me and you, flowing out into the desert, setting all the captives free. So Jesus Christ prayed for this peace, and He wanted us to live in peace. Say, peace, I live with you. My peace. I give to you. Not as the world gives to I give to you. And it goes on to say, let not your heart be troubled. In the same John chapter 14, the opening, say, do not let your heart be troubled. What is that thing that can trouble your heart? What can trouble your heart? What in a, a dull language because who book one for the troubles of the world? Maybe we can when the Jesus says let not your heart be troubled. Good morning, Auntie. Good morning. What can trouble your heart? Maybe we're sleeping, so. Has your heart ever been troubled? What troubled you? Losing my parents. Losing your parents troubled you? Okay. Losing my parents and my elder brother. Yesterday, sorry, I said my condolences, and your heart is troubled. Is that really supposed to trouble your heart? What are those things that can trouble your heart? Where I will go when I leave this world. Beautiful eschatology. Where I will go when I leave this world. Success in life. That is a, 
you know, about a lot of people are worried. And what is going to happen to me tomorrow? That is the problem. <laughs> that is it. Will my business flourish? Will I get a job when I graduate from school? The fear of the unknown can trouble your heart. When I have not enough money to continue. Okay, ego. Work ego. So when you don't have money, your heart is trouble. Oh boy. What can trouble your heart? What to do next? What to do next? Does anybody want to tell me what, is anybody here who want to tell me what can trouble your heart? I want it for luxury. Amen? There are a lot of sicknesses in the world. Maybe if you have, your heart is spinning you, you can cope with it, isn't it? You're like even COVID-19 said you can even nowadays you can cope with it. But there is a sickness that is almost like a bear of back. If you just I'm doing you and you drop. What is that sickness called? Heart failure. When you have heart failure, hmm, I don't come home. Asthenic hypochondriaca exhaustion, where your heart is exhausted. When too much thinking has set your heart ablaze. So Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Your heart can be troubled when you are not experiencing love. When you think you are alone in the world, when you think you have no one to call upon, when you think that the world is crumbling on you, your heart can be troubled. When you are not sure of the next meal, your heart can be troubled. When there is no peace, like those in Brunel states, when you sleep, you are not too sure whether you will wake up the next morning, your heart can be troubled. Now Nigeria is really, really troubled. Heard of what happened at day day, I'm sure. What's happening in Bauchi? What's happening in Sokoto? Religion that should unite us is beginning to split us into pieces. And so the Lord says, I'll go away and I'll come to you. So my sister that lost somebody, he is going there to pray with you, to pray for you, to wait for you. And the Lord said, I'm going so that when I go and prepare you a place, I'll come back, I'll take you, we'll go together. Where I am, you too will do what? You will be. And now I have told you before it happens. The second reading of today talks about the unity of God's people. Different gates leading to one city. Different words, different gates leading to one city. The first reading, the unity of the church was threatened. And that was going to trouble the heart of the church. And what led to this trouble? Ethnicity. Did you hear me right? What did I say? Ethnicity. The Jews feel that or felt that the Hellenists, the Gentiles, who were going to become Christians, must do what? Must be circumcised. And of course, they must practice the Mosaic law, the Judaic law. And so, this led to the first council of Jerusalem. 
to let them know the essentials. And the start by saying, and this is the letter that was written. Since we have heard that some persons from us have troubled you with words. And Jesus Christ has told us, do not let your heart be troubled. Now, the, some people now, the followers, they now went there to trouble them with what? With words. Unsettling your minds. Although we gave them no instructions. Look at our times, words of parishioners. They will just go over Sabi for church. They will deliver the message that the parish priest did not send them. Like somebody is coming out for communion, the church body will just come and drag the person out without proper inquiry. Why? He say, I don't think this man receives communion. But that, let's, let's say that topic for another day. And so they have decided to settle this matter by telling them the essentials what to do to belong to the church. This church that we see, even though after this council, there has been a lot of other issues, like Peter and Paul had issues as regarded the Galatians. There is something very unique about the Apostolic Church. And what is that? Hmm? Unity. Unity. There's something very unique about the Apostolic Church. If you can tell me what was unique in the Apostolic Church, I'll give you 1,000 naira. Something that was unique in the Apostolic Church. I don't mean the Apostolic Church to have in Nigeria. I mean the church that existed immediately after Christ. The church that existed when only the apostles were now managing the church. Jesus has died. I don't mean Christ's apostolic church that is in Nigeria. I mean the church of the apostles, the apostolic church. If you can tell me something that was unique, very unique about that church, 1,000 naira. The Holy Spirit. Hey, no, maybe I'm going to go back with my one thousand naira. You should have it. Just raise up your hand. The universality of the church. Uh-uh. Yeah. No. No. Evangelism. Eh? Evangelism. Uh-uh. Something was very unique in the Apostolic Church. Okay. They were not tribalized. Okay. No. Yes. No. 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 They should get it one thousand naira. They don't dance. Hmm? They don't dance. No. They don't dance. They don't dance. They don't dance. Oh my God. Like what I want. Amen. I think yes. Eh? Communal life. Communal life. Good. Unanimous decision guided by God. Unanimous decision. Okay. Let me tell you that something that was very unique in the apostolic church. None of the apostles founded his own church. Did you get me? None of the twelve apostles founded his own church. There is no church of Peter, church of James, church of John, church of this. They remain one. Who said it? Did you say no one? Did you say that? I said no one founded his own church. Okay, the togetherness. Who said that? No, togetherness. That is what no I want to hear. What I wanted to hear was that the church, none of the apostles founded his own church. That is what I wanted to hear. Uh, see, you see what I'm working with, man. Carry a book in my Amen? Yes, together, they say we are united to a point that none of them founded his own church. When Peter and Paul quarreled, they would have founded their church, but they did not. 
So now, today the church is strongly for ecumenism. And that church survived for how many years? If you have this, you will see how the church started splitting and how the church tried to make unity. So what you do, just go to page 38 of Dialogue in Context. And I'll read it out for you after which I will stop this long homily. The first step was the post Chalcedonian schism. That was 470 AD, which gave rise to the New Fizat Church of the East. East here does not mean Bolando. Uh-huh. Then step number two, the great schism of 1085, caused by an unfortunate quarrel between the Pope and the Patriarch of Constantinople over jurisdiction which gave rise to the present Orthodox Church under the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople in Istanbul, Turkey. The last one, Luther's Protestant Reformation of the 16th century that gave rise to the split of what was left of the church in the West, that is the Roman Catholic Church, into Catholic and Protestants. And since then, the splitting has not stopped. Now somebody can come from the farm and found his own church. Like when the protesters broke away because of marriage to Amboline and the Catherine of Arag of Erin the Aids. From Anglican, you have all that, you know, they started splitting, 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 splitting. And today, you cannot count the number of churches in the world. A lot of, you know, in fact, if you are traveling before in Igbo land, 1976, when I went to Mwahia, the only church you can see is Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, maybe Baptist. But today, if you are going from Unicha to Ikorek Bene, the only soundboard that is not church is Philly Station. <laughs> All the other soundboard, they are churches. So today, we are preparing for Ascension and Pentecost, right? So Jesus Christ is praying that the church will be united. And from now, you know, we are beginning to gather ourselves to see how we will experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised us in today's gospel. And if the church is not united, the church is in danger. Any external evader can invade the church and crumble the church. But the church is marching on. And that is why the Catholic Church has survived for 2022 years. And the church is still standing. And other churches have come up and they have gone. But then this unity we are talking about should not just be the bigger one. We start this unity from our families. What they call the Senacris. Unity of hearts. So that your heart will not break. So it is my prayer today that God who loves us will continue to protect us. We pray for the unity of our church. We pray for the unity of our nation. Now you have other religions in Nigeria and in the world that all of us will know that what brings us together is humanity. And that we are all children of God. And that we should not kill one another in God's name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.